Hey everyone, Wynn here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I help beginning watercolorists grow their skill and confidence in watercolor. So today I'm going to be covering light and shadow. So I'm taking all the mystery out of understanding how to mix lights and darks. Let's go! Okay, so I'm starting off with my 2H pencil. It's a Statler pencil set and uh, I can link that in the comments or in the description below. Um, I'm starting off with a very light sketch and it's just the outline shape. You can see I'm following a picture in the bottom left corner. And whenever you start a painting, you want to ask yourself, where is the light source? And what type of light is it? Is it sunlight or is it a halogen light? Daylight, you know, you need to make sure you figure that out as well. And where is the light coming from? It's coming from the top right corner. So I'm going to be mixing cad red to start off with a little bit of opera rose, but mainly cad red. And I have basically orange juice consistency on my brush. So I'm using quite a bit of water and I'm creating my first wet onto dry wash. So I started off with a lot more red you can see on the right side than on the left. Now I have a nice surface to start my painting on. I'm going to mix a little bit more opera rose and a lot more cad red. Now I'm going to get more of an intense deep red. And I'm starting with the right side because it is a little juicier. It is, it is uh, more saturated in the red on the right. On the left, it gets dull and, and dark and gray. And, and uh, so as we transition over, I'm going to use uh, cad yellow to mix in with my cad red. And that makes a nice kind of pale yellow orange uh, type of look. And you can see how the tones are starting to change. It's going from pure red to, to this orange yellow. And I'm just going to drop some more dark deep red just to keep that surface wet and vibrant. I'm going to add some more water. Keep cleaning off your brush. I always want to make sure you have a clean brush. I'm going to go into the Burnt Sienna and I'm going to add that to the Cad Red because I'm starting to look at my values. You want to ask yourself where's the darkest darks and where's the lightest lights. So on the left side I see a transition tone in the shadow and that's what I'm creating right there. It's Burnt Sienna mixed with Cad Red. And here's a little more Burnt Sienna on my brush and um, then I added a little more Payne's Gray to start getting that deep dark background. It's not black on the on the actual picture. It's this deep dark brown uh, mixed with the yellow and and red. So I'm gonna add a little burnt umber because I'm noticing burnt umber is kind of like a bark color on a tree and you know apples come from trees so there's a there's probably shades of it in there and you can see how deep I got that so it, and I'm not worried at this point I'm just tapping the surface to make sure that it all blends nicely so I'm starting with that edge so I have burnt sienna burnt umber cad red cad yellow all right in there and you can see how it's transitioning just like the picture is I'm going to tap a few little uh, marks in there of cad red you never want to scratch your surface too rough uh, with watercolor. You want to just tap the surface. That's what I've learned throughout the years. And now I'm adding more cad red. So that deep cad red, I'm really getting it vibrant at this point. And I still want to keep the shape and uh, we'll be uh, lightening that up in a minute here, but I'm just starting to focus in on my my color usage there. Adding cad yellow. Really trying to get that nice deep apple color. So it's it's again Payne's gray on the left side. Transitioning that over. You can see that the surface is pretty wet still. And I don't care at the at this point at the very bottom it's just bleeding nicely. And so now I'm gonna lighten up just for that little highlight. Hold it for two seconds and now you can see that I just created an immediate highlight lifting with the tissue paper and now I'm trying to soften it up a little bit 
And so I could do that multiple times. I can go back over it, and you can see that's slightly lighter now, just on that top corner, because I know that the light source is coming diagonally from the top right corner down to the bottom left corner. And again, in any subject you have, always try to find the shadows and the highlights. That'll tell you where the light source is. So I'm, I'm making it look a little more realistic with the, the top being a little bit darker and showing the curve as it goes around. And you can see how many times I've already been in the same area. And that's what's great about watercolor. You can just keep going over it and lifting out colors as needed. So I'm really getting that nice round shape I can see now. So I'm lifting a little bit more just to get some of these. So there's lots of different shadows. There's actually a um, reflected light off the ground back up into the apple. And now I'm starting to place my deep Payne's gray. So this is pretty much straight Payne's gray with a little bit of burnt umber on there. You can see how it's just kind of melted into the bottom of the apple. And that's okay. It's, it's now absorbing the paper and you can push it around a little bit to make it look even more realistic. And so with this, um, you can keep doing this process over and over until you, know, you get it to the point where you want it. You could spray it with a little uh, tap there of, of burnt sienna. You know, apples are not perfect, so you could go back in there and tap a few more times just to give it more character. Um, I'm noticing on the left side, it probably could get a little bit more red. So I'm going to tap in a little bit more of that cad red and just watch how it starts to come to life. It, you know, as there's so many different areas as it keeps bleeding. So I'm approaching done at this point, but I'm just going to add a little bit more highlight on the top right. And I could even deepen and dark the bottom left shadow. Okay, the next uh, subject I'm working on is this tree. And I'm um, just trying to show you a quick example of how you would look at just a simple tree. Again, starting off with my 2H pencil, very light outline shape. And I'm going to start off with just permanent green. So just basically a lot of water on my brush and very little pigment. And I'm kind of scribbling the surface. I'm not scrubbing it. I'm just lightly tapping. It's called scumbling. And now I'm going to, I still have that mixture of burnt sienna and uh, Payne's gray. So that makes a perfect bark color. And now I'm adding in a little bit more uh, Payne's Gray. And now I have my cast shadow set up. So there's a cast shadow underneath the tree. And now I'm going back in with Payne's Gray and Permanent Green. So that makes a nice deep green. So I'm going real deep as I approach underneath the tree. On the top of the tree, I'm trying to keep that as watered down and thin as possible. I'm gonna grab some lemon yellow, Windsor Newton lemon yellow, and just mix that in just a little bit with the permanent green so I can keep my highlights in the top. Clean off my brush, add some more lemon yellow. You can see how I'm creating now a transition of tones. Underneath, I'm gonna add even a little highlights in the shadows because no shadow is perfectly black or perfectly gray. You always wanna add a little bit more uh, lights as because as you look through a tree, it's never uh, perfectly black. So I'm just gonna tap, just add a little more details. I want your eye to blend and you can see how I have a diagonal light source happening and that's what I want. I want the the visual representation to look from the, the sunlight's coming from top left down. Thanks so much for following along with me and if you like this video then you'll probably like this wet on wet technique video. 
And as always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks.